Hey guys, today's video and lesson will be um, referring to momentum and impulse of the physics syllabus. So it's important to understand a couple of terms before we get into the actual nitty gritty stuff of momentum and impulse. Linear momentum is defined as the product of the mass and velocity of the object. As we can see, if we look at the notes here, no resultant force will be experienced when the velocity remains constant or obviously when the object is at rest. If, a, if the object experiences a resultant force, the object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. Then if we look at momentum, applying the definition that I just mentioned earlier, the formula for linear momentum is momentum is equal to mass times velocity of the object. It is a vector quantity, so it does require direction. As, I, as I've just mentioned now, it's a vector quantity with the same direction as the velocity. Then another important section, although I haven't really seen it being examined that much, is uh, Newton's second law in terms of linear momentum. The direct definition of this is the net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum. And this can be inferred from this formula. Your net force is equal to your change in momentum over your change in time. The net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum, which is just basically putting these two um, sort of terms into one single term. Then if we move on to impulse, impulse is, uh, all it is is simply put, it is the change in momentum of an object. The direct IV definition of this is the product of the net force and the contact time for which the force acts. Momentum change or the impulse is directly proportional to the force and directly proportional to the time. Impulse, the formula for impulse is given as J, which is the numerical unit or the, the unit for impulse, equals F net multiplied by the change in time. Force can be calculated if the time is given. Then just another side section, which is quite important, and it, it often comes up in explanatory questions rather than mathematically inclined questions, is the whole idea of how to apply this formula of J equals M times by the change in velocity into a sort of word problem. So what can be inferred from this formula, the second line over here, F net multiplied by time is equal to mass times by your change in velocity. If you increase the time of a collision, you will increase the velocity of a collision and you will therefore decrease your F net or your net force experienced during the collision. If we look at an example, a nice example to demonstrate this formula is catching a cricket ball um, with soft hands versus, you know, and what I mean by this is when you catch the cricket ball, you kind of absorb it into your body which means that you're increasing the contact time for which that um, force acts. And therefore, if we look at that formula, if you increase your contact time for which the force acts, you're decreasing your net force experienced by the cricketer's hands, which will obviously mean that it's less sore or whatever. Another thing can be inferred from this, velocity is directly proportional to time. Then another important section, and this definitely gets examined quite a lot, specifically with uh, mathematically based questions, uh, is the conservation of momentum. So the law of conservation of linear momentum is defined as the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant or is conserved. What this theoretically means in simple English is the momentum before the collision is always equal to the momentum after the collision provided there is no external forces involved, such as friction or whatever. So if we look at the law of conservation of momentum, momentum before is equal to momentum after, and obviously using um, the momentum, linear momentum formula of P is equal to M times, um, M times by the velocity, M being the mass, we can infer that if you have two objects, you work them out separately before the collision, and separately after the collision. Then we have gone on to identify the three most common scenarios um, where they will examine you 
um, regarding linear momentum. These include object A and B are coming towards each other. So how these examples work is the top line of the example. So that line, that line, and that line is the objects before a collision has taken place. And the bottom line, so that one, that one, and that one, is the objects after the collision has taken place. So all that is happening in this first scenario is two objects collide and then they move off in opposite directions. And you would utilize this formula over here, which is the exact same formula as this. Then if we look at the second scenario, two objects are traveling towards each other. Um, they, they collide and then the one object might be heavier than the other. So it causes them to come together and move off in the same direction. So then what you would do, you would still keep your um, momentum separate for before the collision because you need to work out your momentum of A and your momentum of B given by this. But then because they move off together, you can combine their masses uh, and they move off with the same velocity because they're together. Then um, and, uh, the third scenario deals with objects that are together and then say a small explosion or something takes place and it causes them to... Um, move off in different directions you would basically just um, invert this formula here so you would combine them before the collision and you would separate them after the collision and another important point regarding this section is you must indicate to the examiner which directions you are choosing as positive or negative it doesn't matter which directions you use as long as you state them and you keep them constant throughout your questions um, that concludes the video on uh, momentum and impulse. Thank you very much.